I uh, decided to do a quick video for you um, on how I did this conversion. I was going to send you the videos I'd taken during the conversion, but I just realized they weren't so great. Um, so I thought it'd be easier to do a very quick video just to show you exactly what I did. So this is this here in front of you is a circuit board that I pulled out of my current control box. Um, this was what was in there when the item was shipped. So this is what should come with it standard. Yours may be a bit different, but this does have a parallel port. And I suppose the biggest difference is it has a, um, a USB connection to uh, the board supports your XYZ as you'd expect you have a 24 volt input to the board and you have a stop emergency stop controller there should you want to you can also put a Z probe in there if you want it but I haven't done it it wasn't in there when I purchased the system so that's my current board now if you remember the Amazon, the one I sent you the Amazon link for, it pretty much has all the same inputs and outputs, except it doesn't have a parallel port, which you don't want anyway. Um, and that new board is wired into my controller, this is my controller box. That's the board wired in. You will see I've got my X, Y, Z going in. That wasn't straightforward, it wasn't difficult, but it wasn't straightforward, I'll explain that in a minute. There's my stop, which was unplug from the old plug into the new directly um, my XYZ the bit that made it a little bit tricky is that it actually came my my current system supported a much bigger 4 pin connector the new board uses smaller 4 pin connectors so what I had to do is order some 4 pin connectors <coughs> uh, they're pretty st the standard um, CNC stepper motor connectors which I got from Amazon for about six pounds I got four of them and I had to wire them in I had to cut off the old ones as you can see and I used terminal blocks um, to wire them into the new cables here so this side obviously is a new cable and that's the existing cable I cut it off put a terminal block on and connected the new wires now the reason why I use terminal blocks is because the color coding is different and if you get it the wrong way around, the motor won't run right. It'll either not run at all or will run in reverse or something strange. Actually, I had mine running in reverse when I first wired it up. So I had to play about with the wires to get it right. And obviously with terminal blocks, you can, you know, un uh, unscrew them and screw them back in. I will sp splice these together properly later, but for now, it works. Uh, the only other important point to note here is this board here <coughs> controls the power to this board. It also controls the power to the spindle. <clears throat> now the spindle here runs totally independent to the to this control board. Same with the old control board. The old control board has no bearing on what the spindle did. The spindle here could be switched on and you could control the speed and it'd have no impact or there'd be no connection between that and the control board, which is this board here. <clears throat> um, and why that's important is because... Um, <clears throat> The, well, this, the only thing is that this control board sent power uh, to that control board. So that's the only connection between these two. And why it's important, I suppose, is because you don't have to touch this. So you can leave this exactly as it is. You just need to take the power supply from here um, and put it into your new board. Now, previously, the power supply it had a 2-pin connector and it connected up to that 24-volt connector there. The new board doesn't have a two pin connection. Instead, it had a standard power adapter input, which looks like one of those things. Sorry, it's not allowed to focus there. You can see that. So what I did, I took the two cables, the negative and positive coming out, the old power board, this thing here. Basically, it, it looked like, you can see that cable there. If you can, I'm just gonna spit around, make it a bit clearer. Hopefully it's focused now. So that cable there, two pin, I wired it into a <clears throat> a power, um, what would you call it? A um, it, it comes supplied. The, the board came supplied with a, um, a power socket, which I'll show you what that looks like. I can just unplug it. Bear with me. It came supplied with that end there. <clears throat> so I wired those two cables into that, and in order to um, make use of that back port which now faces the rear end 
um, I ended up having to send the cable outside and then back into that port. I mean, honestly, you could probably just take the two wires and sold them to the board and do away with it, the power input there. But I just thought for the sake of, you know, it'll take me a couple of minutes to do this and it ultimately be a lot easier. And that was it really. That's what, that's what I needed to do to get this working. The probably the only other point to know was that um, the other board's a bit bigger and it was sat on this aluminium heatsink. Now when it's on this heatsink, it aligned perfectly, obviously, to the holes at the back. The new board didn't, so I had to put these spaces in here to raise the board to the right level so that it did poke out the back. Um, I think that is probably... The, the only thing to note with your board that's inside and the control unit that you have, if it doesn't have these four XYZ and motor controls, separate controls, then this whole thing could be a bit more tricky. If it's totally controlled from the parallel port and that controls the XYZ and it controls the motor and so on, I don't know that it does because I'm not familiar with the the unit you have, then you're probably going to have to split apart the parallel connection in and do all sorts of weird things. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see what that control, what inputs that control, in, inputs and outputs that control unit has. Um, I think that probably gives you enough to to go ahead and see if this is if it's feasible with your with your control box um, and if there's anything that you you struggle with or want some further advice on I could do my best to help it's not it's not something I've done in the past is the one one-off thing so I'm not overly familiar with it but um, I did get it to work so it's uh, and it wasn't difficult really and so it's really worth trying if uh, if you want to run easy easy to use software like easel so here's the uh, finished setup um, the unit switches on and I, over here I've got um, easel set up. I've just been cutting some um, numbers for my, well it doesn't really matter what they're for, but uh, I've been cutting some pl uh, plastic numbers. Um, the job's just complete, but um, I can control the machine here, so if I just mess about with it a little bit, for example. In fact, let's just... Uh, Knock it back by 200 mil. Yep, that should work. Bring up the machine, and there we go. It's moving away. So it's really nice and easy to use wire easel. And um, very reliable as well. I've never never seen it fail. But um, yeah, do have a go and uh, if you if you decide to. And certainly let me know how you get on, I'd be really interested.